doing. They're kind of. Whew. Is it 12? Okay. <laughs> like, so we're just going to do this, Claire, like the presentation. Do it. Let's do, do it. it. We're doing it. Okay. Only in a sense, that's um, not a mistype that we have the apostrophe after the S of the school name. But we'll tell you some more about that in a little bit. My name is Claire Benedict, and I'm thrilled that you join us virtually from uh, Suzuki. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions here at Holy Innocence for pre-K three through fifth grade. I'm a former Holy Innocence student, and I'm also a current Holy Innocence parent of two middle schoolers. So um, we're gonna just go over some fast facts and show you some interview uh, video clips and hopefully give you a good idea and certainly love to hear from y'all as well. Any questions, we'll be watching the chat box. Um, and I'm Katie Patrick. I'm the Enrollment Data Manager here at Holy Innocence. I oversee all things Ravenna. So if you have any um, application questions, Ravenna questions, um, or any just general Holy Innocence questions, I'm happy to help. I um, also am a parent of um, a lower school student here, and I too um, went here and I graduated a little while back. Um, so Claire and I can talk to you all as um, admission representatives, but also as parents. Um, and so we're going to be providing you with kind of a cursory overview of primary and lower school. And at the end, we'll have um, time for some questions. But first, we have um, a message from our Director of Enrollment Management, Dr. Beth Sarah Wright. Welcome to Holy Innocence Episcopal School, the largest parish day school in the country. We are a Christian school that welcomes all. Robust performers, accomplished scholars, stellar musicians. Be a problem solver. Discover your inner champion. Be tomorrow's engineer. Expand your global citizenship. We are a community of intellectual adventurers prepared for college and life beyond. This is the holy innocence difference. Over six decades of educational excellence in Atlanta. Join us on this adventure. So just a few fast facts about our school. Our total enrollment is around 1,360 students. That's pre-K three through 12, primary, lower, middle, and upper school divisions. Our teacher to student ratio averages about eight to one. And as an Episcopal school, that means that we are outward focused and we welcome families and students of all faith traditions. So going back to the school name, we were founded by Holiness and Episcopal Church in 1959, and the name of the school refers to honoring children of the Bible who are considered both holy and innocent. And our focus today remains in support of that mission. So um, we also have a word from our primary school principal, Greg Kaiser. We can let you hear from him. Kids in the primary school at Holy Innocence know that they're part of something bigger than themselves. They're part of a school community. They're part of a school family. Our students are fully engaged members of a pre-K through 12 learning community. We want our students to be globally minded. We want them to understand that the world is a big place, but even though they're small, they have a place in it and that they can make a difference. Something that I say to the kids all the time is that you don't have to be a grown up to be a teacher. And whether you're three years old, you're 103 years old, done things, you've seen things, you've experienced things that others haven't, that you can share those. And you can make someone's life better simply by helping them to learn something new or simply by a small act of kindness. Our job in the primary school is to make sure that we give them those opportunities to teach, to lead, to serve, and to learn every day. All of these things go together to make a wholly innocent student. And the primary school is where it all starts. So just in case some of that audio might not have been syncing up, the main thing we wanted y'all to hear is that you don't have to be a grown up to be a teacher. We, we repeat that quote a couple different times, but um, our program does begin as early as um, the pre-K three years. So progressing through kindergarten for that primary school division, um, five day a week schedule where, you know, the environment is both encouraging and challenging. It's emphasis on personal responsibility and social development. 
Um, so here we're showing sort of as an example, the schedule that's pretty typical of a kindergarten student. It's a full and busy school day, as you can see, and it um, starts as early as 7.45 a.m. And after dismissal, we do offer options for extended daycare and our auxiliary programs, and those run until about 6 p.m. Of course, we allow plenty of time for intentional play. We know that that's an integral part of a child's growth. So in addition to the language arts and the math classes, we offer an array of specialty classes. Um, including STEM-focused Brainstormers Lab that invites learning by doing, specifically with hands-on experiments. We know that children do like to get messy. Um, and in ad addition to the dedicated art, music, PE, um, we have both Spanish and French on a rotating basis. Um, so it's a robust and relevant curriculum, and these students leave our primary school ready for all that's ahead of them in our lower school. And just to give you an idea of what's ahead in the lower school, uh, we serve students in grades first through fifth. So every opportunity awaits these students. Um, they're in challenged as learners. They're encouraged by our faculty to explore and seek out individual paths of learning. Because we were founded as a primary and lower school to begin, we have a long tradition of being able to lay that foundation for student success. And it's in the lower school where they begin to evolve into the confident, ambitious students they were gifted to be. We would like for you to also hear from our lower school principal, Dr. Issa Elyashev. Lower school is a very special time where you can still nurture them, but challenge them academically. It's a moment where they're very open to new ideas. And also it's a time that allows teachers to understand their students' passions. I am an optimistic leader. And what I want for our community to know is that we are the best lower school in the state of Georgia. I want people to recognize, value, and understand the work that we're doing and how we are a school that is nurturing future leaders, uh, great citizens, we're very intentional at everything that we do because we want to make sure that our students have the skills that they need in order to be successful in whatever it is that they're gonna to decide to do in the future. So, the primary school schedule, um, this is an example of a lower school uh, child um, week. Um, specifically, this belongs to a fifth grader. So our lower school students have a full and robust school day as well, as you can see. And all of our young students, um, really starting as early as our pre-K three, will start their day um, in morning meeting. And that's led by the homeroom teacher. And so this start to the school day really is sort of the means by which we build our cohesive community here at the school. Um, all the students will attend language arts and math classes each day. Um, including nationally acclaimed reading and writing programs, as well as courses in science, history, Spanish, and French. And in addition to these core courses, the students are exposed to a variety of co-curricular options from our Innovations Technology Lab, where they'll master the art of coding. Um, they'll play robotic Sphero golf and compete in the robotic Sphero Olympics, um, to the visual arts and music, our global faith, faith and service classes. Um, those are co-taught by our chaplain in the lower school. And the students will partner with both local and worldwide volunteer organizations. Um, and we have a lot of different sister school partnerships around the globe. Um, so there's so much that we offer beyond the classroom and Holy Innocence makes sure that these enriching experiences are made available um, even to our youngest learners. Um, so we'll move on here to kind of what makes Holy Innocence unique. So we know you're considering a number of different schools for your child's educational journey, and Atlanta offers a lot of options. Um, but we'd love to just tell you a few things that make us stand out a little bit in the crowd. Okay, we provide a unique approach to individualizing instruction for our youngest learners. We call it the best start. Specifically, each child in grades pre-K three through kindergarten will be individually assessed 
periodically during the school year as a way to monitor their academic progress and so that we're able to identify areas of strength and areas where are there are opportunities for growth. The assessments provide information about the optimum ways in which each child learns so teachers can then adjust accordingly for maximum success and then that's an authentic provision of the best start for each child. Um, so, you know, STEM education, it's a thriving focus here at Holy Innocence across all four of our divisions. Um, we have an academic coordinator who um, oversees the scope and sequence of the curriculum from our pre-K three all the way through 12th grade. Uh, primary school students have access to the state-of-the-art um, Brainstormers Design Thinking Lab. Um, that's where the youngest scientists will delve into hands-on problem-solving activities and labs. They'll explore how things work and why. Uh, they work in our Earth Magic Learning Garden and collaborate with classmates and learn how to give and receive constructive criticism and feedback. And then in the lower school, first through fifth grades, the students participate in the cutting edge innovations technology course that we offer using a variety of technology based tools. Um, these young students learn to create, collaborate, code, design and produce. And each student has access to laptops and iPads and mini robots. So these are courses again that our students are taking in addition to their math and their science classes. Um, but we can let you see um, a first grade science classroom in action. Hi, I'm Mary Quarles and I am the first through third science lab teacher. We have just finished first grade module about sound and light. The kids have learned all about vibrations and reflection and shadows, but today we're jumping into plants and animals. So today the kids have an opportunity to plant rye and alfalfa seeds and learn all about the process of growing a plant. Now we are going to plant the lawn first and it's a certain type of seed. Take a look. Today we are going to be planting rye seeds. So these are rye seeds. They're a type of grass. Now look at this. They're kind of long. They almost grass. It does. They almost look like a oopsie, a kernel of rice. It does look a little like fertilizer. It's hard and it's dry, but when you put it into grass and water it and take good care of it, but it grows and it survives your lawn. If I only put rye seeds in, what would I end up growing? Grass. Grass. I just have a cup full of grass. But today, you get to add plants. These are alfalfa seeds, and they are so little and tiny. It's actually another good reason. Tell us. Because when they sprout, the roots can go out and spread into the ground. You know what? And you could take this whole thing and put it down in the ground and let it continue to grow. Great idea. Can we keep it? This is for you to keep and take home. Now It's, it's great to see Ms. Corals being so patient with, you know, eager learners. Um, in keeping with our mission of developing in students a sense of service to the world community, our students, even as young as pre-K three, learn the importance of serving others. And beginning in kindergarten, our students will venture off campus, uh, engaging in service projects around the community. It's not only a valued tradition at Holy Innocence, but service is a learned responsibility and one that expands as students enter at middle and upper school. Through various school partnerships in the Atlanta area, we have, um, you know, it, we feel it's not only our duty to prepare students academically, but also through inclusive character education as well. So at the primary school, students attend a weekly life lessons class with our counselor and students in the lower school attend a weekly global faith and service class. And through courses like these, our students develop socially and emotionally, <clears throat> also to learn to celebrate differences and meaningfully engage with the world around them. And also of note, we're proud to be the first member school in the state of Georgia as part of the Round Square Network. It means we're connected with nearly 200 other independent schools around the globe and we share a commitment to the ideals of internationalism, democracy, environmentalism, adventure, leadership, and service. We also have a quick clip of a lower school service project so you can see um, 
what some, you know, one example of hands-on learning with that. I'm so proud of our Golden Bears. They all pulled together. Golden Bears always care. We asked them to bring in supplies, and they brought in so many diapers and water. My back's aching from putting them in the cars, and all kinds of uh, relief for the victims of Hurricane Michael. And we are so proud of you, Golden Bear Nation. Well done. We have two cars full of food and resources for all victims of Hurricane Michael. I promise I will never. So right there at the end, they're saying, I promise I won't ever let a problem get so big that I can't make a difference, just as another full out quote there. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, despite the large size of our campus and our student body, we're still one school and we celebrate the fact that even our three year olds have a shared experience with our oldest students. As one school, we do take advantage of the wonderful age range um, and see the benefits of cross-divisional activities and gatherings. And you can see some photos of that here. Although fun, these partnerships also serve the much larger purpose of building community. And as our primary school principal always says, you do not have to be a grown up to be a teacher. So you can see a few examples here in these pictures, the primary school and senior Halloween parade at the top is always a hit and parents of both ages will come out and watch. Uh, the kindergarten and senior chapel ceremony, it's a sweet start to the school year where the kindergartners present the seniors with their uh, school tie and the seniors present the kindergartners with their book bag. Um, we also have um, lower school homerooms welcome their buddy classes and um, they do projects together. And you can see we have our football players join our first and second grade reading classes uh, for story time. And then um, pretty neat, and I'll show you this clip next, our kindergartners spend many of their own science classes up with our upper school engineering and robotics students in the high school STEM um, robotics lab. And so here's um, a nice little video of their experience. That was pretty good. About five years ago, we got together with the uh, with the engineering team down here. And we started talking about what that might look like to have our kindergartners visiting the lab. Um, what we found and what we often find when we start working with the older students is that it was a match made in heaven. That the kids, that our kindergartners and the upper school students um, had such a great time working together. It's really important to me that we do this program because I think that you get a lot of young kids really, really want to play with robots and learn a lot of new things. And some of them are very serious about it and had a lot of fun doing it. And I had a lot of fun working with them and seeing what all their creativity can show. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite thing was building this cool robot. It um, has little eyes, these little eyes. The power is, it can move. You know, our mission statement calls for a love of learning, respect for self and others, faith in God, and a sense of service to the world community. And first of all, when you're talking about love of learning, I mean, I think that's pretty self-evident with what's going on here. But it's not just our kindergartners who are doing the learning. It's the older kids as well. They're learning from each other, and that's really what it should be. And, you know, our upper schoolers do such a fantastic job of just making the, the five-year-olds feel welcome, feel safe, and helping them to understand that, you know, we can learn from every opportunity in front of us. Respect for self and others and a sense of service to the world community. You just watch as how these kids treat each other, how they help each other out. I think that's just a perfect embodiment of that. And then when it comes to the last part, I think when you're talking about uh, uh, what it is that little kids or even big kids can do, all you got to do is have a little faith in them. So same thing. We always love getting to have um, the partnerships, you know, of the different ages, um, since the learning always goes both ways. And as part of our strategic plan, um, 
we're really excited and it's happening right this minute in the middle of our campus. We have a transformational construction project underway and that includes an upper school humanities building and it just further amplifies our sense of community and matching our world-class programs with the world-class facility. Uh, we also have plans for a new incredible lower school building and we invite you to find out more about that with the campaign and everything that the future holds and that's um, a special tab on our website. So those are just a couple quick, one rendering and one current photo. We know you're here to learn about our primary and lower schools, but we would be remiss if we didn't show you the outcomes of a Holy Innocence education. And after all, as a college preparatory school, our duty to your child is to prepare them for college and beyond. So our college counseling department is comprised of four full-time um, dedicated college counselors and each student is assigned to their counselor in their 10th grade year and thus begins the college exploration process. Our college counselors are right fit focused. So they do a tremendous job of helping the parents and the students identify um, college choices and kind of narrowing down their list. Um, the average student here applies to between five and seven colleges and universities, and we have a 100% matriculation rate for our um, students. And then here are a few statistics from our most recent graduates, the class of 2020. So we had 137 uh, seniors and they embarked on their next educational adventure um, at colleges and universities. Um, it really is diverse as the class itself from California to Maine, Colorado to Florida, Texas to Michigan and from Oregon to Quebec. We know that's a lot of information, but the Holy Innocence story is so special and we always have more to share. Um, just looking at our watch and knowing that we are um, trying to make sure we have time for every, anyone's questions. We want to make sure that you have the information or know where to find the next steps for primary and lower school applications. So um, you yeah. can see along with um, on the primary school, um, we along with a lot of other schools, we manage our application process through Ravenna and that is the um, website that hosts all of the application pieces and event registration. So your first step um, is to create an account for your child in Ravenna. And then from there, you'll be able to access all the admission materials. Um, and you can see here everything that's required for a primary school um, applicant, including a couple things that are really more specific to um, kindergarten students, like the kindergarten parent um, interview, as well as the JATP. And then with the lower school, you'll see what's required for first through fifth grade students um, with similar application deadlines. Um, you know, your family, should your family be applying for financial assistance? That application's due um, on the application deadline as well. And then we do ask that kind of the rest is due um, February 15th. And then um, each child from pre-K three through 12th grade will have an evaluation and we have more details um, to come with that, just given the COVID season we're living in. Um, but, you know, registration for everything, again, is through Ravenna. So, um, I, again, I'm happy to answer any Ravenna questions. My job is to make that part as seamless for you as, um, as possible. And again, we're, we're grateful that you've spent part of your day with us and we appreciate um, your interest and we've been doing all the talking. So we're happy to hear from you. If anybody wants to pipe up, I don't see anything that's been typed up yet. But, um, you know, there's always more to share, as I've said, but we are a team. We're working here to be able to answer your questions. And we, we do have a more interactive, customizable um, tour that, you know, takes you thanks to iPhones and drones you can um, get a better look of what the campus looks like you know at this moment and again we've mentioned our construction project but um we'll just go ahead and open it up if anybody else has other questions our email addresses and other contact info is available through the website as well so i'll just make that point that um we'd love for you to track us down Well, first, I want to say thank you for doing this presentation. Um, it provided a lot of information, and we, we really appreciate you guys doing this this year since it's totally different <laughs> from what we've done in the past. Um, and 
if anyone doesn't have any questions, I can go ahead and ask the first question, but I do want to give our parents the opportunity. So does anyone have any questions? Um, you can go ahead sure. and unmute yourself. Yeah, go ahead. And <laughs> ask me. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm always full of questions. <laughs> so, um, Claire and Katie, thank you so much. Um, our daughter Penelope will be applying for her um, this uh, for next fall. And I was curious, so I'm seeing the difference between the primary and lower school. I just want to get some clarification around that. So she is a late September birthday. She just turned five. She would still be applying for kindergarten, which would be in the primary school. Is that she correct? She would. Um, the applicant, the um, the age cutoff is she would have to be um, five by September first. Okay. Um, to be in our in our kindergarten. So she she's already five. She just turned five last week. Last week. So she would. She would be young. Is she in a pre-K four there right now, or is she in a kindergarten-ish program right now? She's um, in their primary classroom at, at Suzuki, so she's. Um, You're talking about applying for kindergarten, correct? Yes, wherever yeah. the starting point would be. I mean, I assume like at the other schools, it's pre-first, but I I just don't see a difference of the primary and the lower school, so that's why I was just curious, kind of. Can right. you yeah, explain she, the differences she would there? would be very age appropriate for going into kindergarten this fall. Okay. Okay. We didn't even really mention we have a, a special program that we call Pre-K-5. And um, just very quickly, it, it sometimes depends on a birthday. Sometimes that's one consideration. It's what we used to call our pre-first, and it would kind of be, it would follow the kindergarten year before first grade for anyone who was feeling young and, you know, needed to build confidence or whatever it was. And many years ago, we moved it in front of kindergarten. So we have students who have gone from a pre-K four class into what we call pre-K five before starting kindergarten. And again, there are all different considerations for that. It's, it's got a kindergarten curriculum, but it's um, just set at a different pace depending on the mix of the kids that are in there. Okay. Um, and a lot of times it is for the younger ones who are feeling like, they want one more year of social and emotional development before they're hitting the kindergarten. And a lot of times because those peer relationships develop so strongly in the kindergarten year, we felt like it was tough for the ones who started kindergarten to feel like they were being held back if they didn't go on to a first grade class. Okay. So that's why we have ours that happen, happens before. And I can talk more specifically about that if others have questions, because it is a little bit. That would not apply to Penelope. Yeah, she, she, Penelope, she would not do that. Penelope needs to go to kindergarten. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was about to say. No, we're yeah. not really ready for no, that. No, no. I mean, we're beyond that, I think. So, um, but I was just curious about that. And then, um, but we keep the kindergarten in our primary school is what I was trying to say for okay. them to be like the seniors of their division. We call it, call it like they have the leadership opportunities and um, that's an intentional decision that the kindergartners are there in our primary school, but first okay. grade is where we start the lower. Okay, that, that makes sense. And then um, it was great to provide all the statistics. How many um, sections do you have for kindergarten? Like, uh, you know, I, I appreciate all the numbers. I guess I'm one of the numbers. Four. Four. You have four? Four classes. Four time rooms, a lead teacher and a co-teacher. And we cap those classes at 18. Okay, 18 students. And then um, do you have Spanish incorporated in your program? They'll do both Spanish and French every year through fifth grade. Okay, and then what classes do you teach? Or what languages do you have in middle and high school? We add Latin to the, to the mix, but at that point you're selecting one and you're sticking with it for the year. Sure, sure. And then um, what's your philosophy on, so I have a almost two year old, so what's your philosophy on uh, siblings? And, um, you know, we're, we're really evaluating it for Penelope, but also for our family. So I was just curious to hear your perspective. We, um, you know, we are, consider ourselves a family school. So we do our best to keep families together. By and large, that works out there, you know, each year there's going to be for, you know, a, a variety of reasons, generally academic, um, where we would not be the right fit for a child who might need much more academic support, um, remediation, that kind of thing. But um, we do, um, 
you know, we do give priority um, to siblings. So we work hard to do that. Okay. And then um, can you share a little bit about your after school program and, and how that works? I, I'll take that one too. My, my daughter, I have a fifth grader um, here. She started in pre-K three and um, after school is dynamite. Um, when, especially when she was really little, she would get very frustrated if she wasn't going to be able to stay for after school because it's incredibly activity based. There's two different types. You can have just sort of standard after school care um, that does run until 6 p.m. Um, they're not watching videos or doing anything like that. They're outside, they're doing art. Um, projects, all things like that. Um, there's a built-in nap time for the youngest ones who still want to hold on to that nap. Um, and then we have um, something called ACE, um, which is more um, enrichment-based courses. So you could sign your child up for like an architecture class, or maybe they're doing paper mache, or they're wanting to do um, Slime camp has been a hit. Um, there's golf and things like that. So you can you can kind of pick which type of after school you want to do. Um, but, but the standard after school care runs um, through fifth grade until 6 p.m. Okay. And Beyond that, most kids are staying after school anyway for a sport or the play or something like that. Okay. And I assume it's somewhat flexible too. On okay. sort of sign up on an as desired basis. Okay, that's helpful. Um, I'm sure I'll have another question before we end the call, but I want to give everyone else an opportunity. Thank you, that's very helpful. I had a question about um, transportation. So do you typically only have families who live within the area attend? Um, or if you have families that do attend from other communities, do you provide transportation for all of your students? It's astounding to me, but apparently we have 80 different zip codes represented in our school. <laughs> That's wow. <wild. laughs> yeah. But um, we do have shuttle buses um, that are routes from certain pickup points just you know it's like a shuttle so that's available again as a sign up basis by semester I believe. And um, so, yeah, there's limited bus availability. Carpool is big, <laughs> I will say. Uh, we, we can provide a zip code list to families um, before the start of the school year, and they will be able to kind of arrange their own um, carpool situation. But we do have, um, like Claire said, a, a bus system that goes to certain, certain spots, and it, we're new to the world of busing. Thank I you. actually have another question. I knew that I wouldn't be finished. Um, the global, you call it global leadership, I want to say, maybe global faith and global service. service. Is that chapel or um, do you have weekly sessions like that? And can you share a little bit more about that aspect of the education? The global faith class is taught by, co-taught by our chaplain. Um, so it's part of the specials rotation with the co-curriculars like the science lab and so forth. Additionally, we have a weekly chapel service by division. So primary schools together, first through fifth have their own service. They're open, their visitors are, are welcome. Obviously this year we, we do that in a different way. It's a, you know, piped in through the classroom. So we're not all gathering together in the chapel itself. But um, the this global faith and service class is a a space for students to learn about other faith traditions in addition to the chapel service. Okay, great. Thank you. I'm gonna ask a COVID related question. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of COVID, what is your new or have you guys had any new protocols or procedures? Oh, yeah. So every child, so we, we have gone back in session. We do have the option for families if they are not comfortable with being here. We are doing um, synchronous um, virtual school as well. Um, we had a number of families take advantage of that at the beginning and slowly they've all just been kind of trickling back in to, for in person. Um, every student from pre-K three through 12th grade wears a mask. 
Um, Claire and I in an office together, we're separate right now, um, but we're both in a mask. Um, we have installed infrared um, scanners on the ceilings in our schools. So we have um, the temperature scanner as people walk um, into the building um, to gauge their temperature. We have, um, let's see, I would say sanitation stations everywhere. We have a lot of um, big white tents set up around school. So they are pushing for kids to be outdoors. Um, I know that in the lower school, they're eating lunch in their home rooms rather than in the big dining hall. And they will play like a short movie um, with these clear things up around them. Um, and they play the movie because they are hoping the kids won't talk so much, but just eat and not spread their germs. Um, and the same goes with, with, um, with middle and high school and then with the primary school. Um, our dining hall has dots on the table where you can sit and they're kind of separated out. And um, am I missing anything else, Claire? I mean, yeah, a lot of people are opting to be outside when they can, even, you know, especially the older grades having classes outside when they can. Again, we're lucky in Atlanta to be able to do that on yeah. so many months. Um, so it's kind of fun. I think, you know, a lot of people are hoping some of the flexibility will stay with some of the um, new protocols. I mean, it's with the idea in mind of safety, but it's also, you know, helps allow everyone to be more creative on lots of lots of fronts. Thank you. And y'all can read about that on our website too. Um, just, I think there's like a whole section about COVID <laughs> on the website. Well, part of it too is this construction project that we keep mentioning. Um, it has impacted, you know, getting around campus some, and that's obviously been ma very manageable. And we intentionally are trying to not have to have people in trailers for any reason or the, you know, temporary classrooms. So we were able to rehab what was our upper school library space into different classrooms. Well, half of an old building is removed and then new ones going up. And then as that one's up, we'll be able to um, increase our green space in the quad area. So again, it's really exciting. It is like we've got the construction fencing all around and the little kids of course love seeing that and the earth movers and the steel beams going up and cool stuff like that. So that's um, definitely exciting, especially for these younger kids. They're gonna be the ones, you know, prime time for these new buildings, which will be great. And again, any, any um, you know, admissions for us is going to be a virtual thing this year. So um, if y'all are interested in, you know, any more information, um, the virtual tour will be ready soon. Our application does open tomorrow. So, um, you know, you're, you would just, in order to be kind of in the know about all this information, you would just want to have an account in Ravenna and, um, you also are welcome to kind of set up a chat with any number of us. If you have questions you'd rather just ask one-on-one, -on -one. Um, we're always here. So we're always happy to talk and, um, and help y'all. Right, the summary of events will be available on Ravenna as well. So you'll see there are different segments that we have, we call like a 101 for primary school and then you know another one likewise for middle middle school and so forth and then we'll have these academic divisions um, spotlighted as well so everything fine arts and stem and steam all related um, we'll have an athletics open house and sometimes you know you think of that for like the older kids but it's always good to know what's down the road as well when you're looking at the big picture so those events again i mean we're going to bring it to your living room. So just be ready. <laughs> In terms of uh, diversity, because I don't know if you guys included it or spoke about it. I'm also taking some phone calls. Um, how diverse would you say your campus is? And especially in the lower school. Yeah, well, it can be measured in all different ways. Obviously, um, we currently have a task force we call 1HI that um, is focusing on inclusion. And again, that's part of our Epis Episcopal identity. Um, so diversity, again, you know, in terms of all different classifications. 
we have students, I'd say between 17 and 18%, Katie, that would identify as of color, I believe. That's our um, current stat there. And some of these fast facts include some of that information as well that are on the website. So I don't think that was on a slide, but um, certainly, you know, that's something that we're always talking about as part of our community and how are we including and, and what's equitable and what's diverse. So we have a director of multicultural affairs on staff full time who's been with the school for a long time. He's also a parent here and um, he's got a couple new initiatives happening, but at the same time, I mean, we always have considered ourselves a diverse community. And, and again, that's measured in a lot of different ways. All right, guys, well, I think that is all. Again, I really, we all really appreciate you doing this this year. And um, if it's okay, I know you said that your information is online, but if anyone have any other questions, um, it's okay to forward it to you or to give Absolutely. your contact information. Mm -hmm. um, so I can do that if parents have anything or any other questions they would prefer to ask. Sure. All right, well, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>